Okay, for the next 50 minutes, we're joined by Dr. Jerome Corsi uh, here as we simulcast at PrisonPlanet.tv with a radio show. And he wrote an excellent article uh, back in 2007 at World Net Daily. We were covering it simultaneously here from the SPP documents that Judicial Watch and others had sued to get of the North American Union body. And they kept saying, we're going to use pandemic flu, economic crises to bring in the North American Union, but this is secret from the public. We've got to keep this secret from the public. Uh, and they went over how the World Health Organization under this treaty agreement with Mexico and Canada would be in charge. Now we see that in the news. Mainstream news is now reporting what we reported and what Dr. Corsi is reporting, that, that, that this is the great time for the new world order and globalism because it is now out in the open. So to break this down and his overall take on this fear-mongering distraction that's been used to get all the other real news out of the headlines uh, is Dr. Jerome Corsi. Uh, best-selling author and writes for World Net Daily. Doc, thanks for coming on with us. Hi, Alex. Great pleasure to be with you. Thank you. You bet. Okay, let's go back to that article you wrote in 2007, uh, which is uh, almost like prophecy with what actually happened. Well, the in 2007, there was the Security and Prosperity Partnership up in Montebello uh, in Quebec, Canada. I was there. And what came out of that agreement was a, out of that meeting, was a new agreement that was signed by... Canada, the United States, and Mexico, which was a North American plan for avian flu and pandemic influenza. And what it, the document agreed to was that if there was going to be an outbreak of avian flu or any pandemic influenza in North America, uh, we, the United States, and the Canada and Mexico would handle that outbreak under the United Nations law. And I documented that there is, in fact, uh, the United Nations has a coordinator, a U.N. system influenza coordinator, who's Dr. Dr. David Nabarro. I believe he still is senior policy advisor to the U.N. director general. And the United States has been moving in this direction for some time. In 2005, uh, President Bush had announced a new international partnership on avian and pandemic influenza. It was at a high level plenary meeting of the U.N. General Assembly in New York on September 14, 2005. So it's quite clear that North America has a plan for handling these health emergencies, and the plan is to go under the blue helmet rule. And what it means, essentially, Alex, kind of breaking it down, is that the United States is no longer sovereign over health emergency situations. That's the, that's the bottom line. Are you there, Alex? Yes, it's, I know it's rare for me to actually shut up and listen to you. I'm just uh, listening to you go over it. Uh, yeah, please continue. In fact, it's still the agreement is still on the SPP website. If you take a look at the SPP www.spp.gov, and you search for the Montebello conference until very recently, and I think it's still there today, you can read the agreement that was signed. So, I mean, it's clear that this is an international agreement, and that. Uh, uh, President Bush has made U.S. management of a true pandemic situation subservient to international law. Now, um, I want to expand on that because, I mean, it's one thing to read you writing about this a couple of years ago from the documents. You know, you, you and I and others have researched that we know it's true. It's another thing to see Reuters, you know, with U.N. in control of global pandemic, U.N. telling Mexico, U.S., Canada, Europe, China what to do. This is more just acclamation, and that's part one I want you to comment on. Then part two, Fox, CNN, uh, MSNBC, CBS, all, yes, martial law uh, is a good thing. Forced inoculation is a good thing. We may lo lock down U.S. cities, but we're going to leave the borders open. How ridiculous is that? Well, and I, you know, as I pointed out, by the way, it is on the SPP.gov website. I just found it under the Montebello Conference. Uh, so far, this whole uh, swine flu outbreak has turned out to be completely a, um, a minor event. And there's very few cases of it. The cases that are found in the United States are not lethal. They're able to be handled by various kinds of antibiotics that we have on the shelf. Uh, the cases that are in Mexico are occurring because Mexico is largely a third-world country, and there aren't even good sanitary conditions in much of Mexico. So Mexico is going to be more prone to having an, an outbreak like this. Uh, 
be a little bit more virulent. But even in Mexico, there aren't very many cases. So, so far, I'm categorizing this as just a scare. It's an hysteria. Now, what it does reflect, Alex, is when you look at it, look at the amount of media attention, the going to you know one of the top levels for the World Health Organization to declare that this is a pandemic, uh, all the quarantining that's going on in Mexico, the preparations are clearly in place for the governments in North America to use a pandemic fear, saying, oh, it's 1918 again. There's going to be 30 million people that die worldwide, like happened at the end of World War II with the flu that spread across the world at that time. World War I, but, yeah. World War I, I'm sorry, World War I, 1918. But there's no evidence whatsoever that this current outbreak is any more than hysteria. Well, Doc, Doc, I didn't know what your view on this would be, but it's it's identical to mine. Yeah. Day one, I said, this is a hoax, this is a fraud, but they're using this as a beta test to prepare for martial law. And then they basically come out and said that, uh, that, oh, well, we know a mega flu is coming in the next six months or so, the head of Homeland Security said, and others, and this was a good drill for us. And, you know, we are going to have to forcibly inoculate you in lockdown cities. This is perfect to have this while society collapsed, while the offshore banks and now Bloomberg reports have stolen 14 plus trillion. It's now over 12 trillion. Last time it was 12 trillion. Every few months we learned the next, you know, horrible number over a trillion a month. Uh, you know, in the last six months since the banker takeover, it's now 14 plus trillion, uh, in, in what they've committed to or spent. And this is a perfect cover. Now, every time a, a nation rebels or resists, oh, we got to lock everything down, a flu popped up, whether it kills people or not. I mean, this is amazing. Well, also, Alex, one of the other parts of this that is important to note all is that it's been accepted in the mainstream media that all of this is just normal. In other words, the possibility of government coming in and shutting down schools, of issuing quarantines, um, even possibly martial law or sequestering people who show up as, as being um, somehow or other showing symptoms of this disease. No, they've been setting up All the tent cities. They've been setting it exactly and acting it's a dry run. Do you think this is a dry run? Uh, it certainly has the characteristics of being a dry run because, you know, this much hysteria, I, I know it's an hysteria at this point because the cases aren't developing. We've had everybody scared and, you know, including my own family frightened to death that this is going to be something that you know, we need to take exceptional measures over. And truthfully, uh, what, there's been one death in the United States from this entire... And that outbreak. was somebody from Mexico City. From Mexico City. You know, we've got uh, 300 million people now in the United States, and we have one death of someone who came from Mexico City. And yet we have nightly news reporting and the White House coming out with special announcements. Uh, we have the...